What is up everybody? We are behind the truck, which means it is time to train. Today, um, I'm gonna do some deadlift practice. I haven't really like done deadlift. I've been reincorporating strength training with deadlifts into my routine on days that I can, because one of the events at the competition got released and it is a deadlift ladder, triples. And then on the last one, you do as many reps as possible, whatever. And then we have a couple of wad things to get done. I'll read those to you real quick. So the first workout that's programmed is an AMRAP for 16 minutes, buy-in of 50 calories on the assault bike, and then the time remaining, you do as many rounds of this as possible, 15 box jump overs, 24 inches, 12 chest bar pull-ups, nine dumbbell, double dumbbell power cleans at 50 pounds, and then the second workout is a 3K row, 50 GHD sit-ups, and 10 rope climbs. You can partition it as desired. So I'm actually really excited for today's training. Let's get into it. They can do whatever they What's up everybody, we are out on a fall morning walk. It's like 40 degrees out, totally normal. I could be in a Speedo and stuff because Wisconsin people, we're just hard as fuck. To kind of round off this video and end it, I'm gonna talk to you guys about POT syndrome, my postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and uh, what I did to kind of get back in the gym, recover from it, quote unquote. That's what I like to say, um, because it is a highly, highly requested video, my most requested video, so let's get into it. Go, go potty, go, go, go potty. Go, go, go potty. All right, y'all, so really the number one thing that I'm gonna say um, was most important that I did, right, was I believed. 
I believe that I could get over it. I believe that I could recover from it. And I didn't take a victim mentality, right? I did for maybe one or two days. I thought like, shit, like this really sucks. Like this is supposedly something that not everybody recovers from. Da, 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 and I had like a, a bad outlook at first, but then I just really adopted the mindset like I can beat this Like I can get through this is not gonna hold me back from doing everything that I want to do I have a son now and I want to give him the world and I want to compete in something I want to be an athlete still. I'm not gonna let this take a hold of me That's the number one thing that I did to kind of get over the hump at least in the beginning and continue on with recovery all right, so number two was I went back to actually doing normal stuff. When you have POTS syndrome, there's a lot of anxiety that surrounds it, right? And there's a lot of anxiety that you're gonna have a flare up of like symptoms and that all this stuff is gonna happen. And you're not gonna be normal in front of people, stuff like that. The second most important thing that I did was just allow myself to go back to doing normal stuff, even if these symptoms would happen because the number one way to break fear in my opinion, is to face that fear. There's a reason why there's something called exposure therapy, and that is to break these fears. That's the second thing that I did that I really think is important. You need to realize that even if you have symptoms, you have to be around people that you trust, that you love, that understand what you're going through, and you need to just continue on doing normal life because first comes the belief, right? And then second is proving to yourself that you're able to actually continue on doing these things, and it is gonna be hard. I'm not saying symptoms won't happen. I'm not saying it's only gonna be five minutes of doing normal shit, but at least you're getting back to doing normal stuff, even if it is only five minutes. Beat that fear, get back into doing what you would do. I just wanna elaborate on that real quick. Like, look, doing that is not gonna be easy, but nothing good that comes out of life is ever easy. Nothing good comes quickly. It always takes time. So you need to kind of progress and let yourself become uncomfortable. The best situations happen out of being uncomfortable. Nothing good comes easy. All right, so something that I'm sure that a lot of you guys are wondering about because this is like a big concern for a lot of people that go through POTS syndrome is exercise. In this step, step number three, I'm gonna talk specifically about weightlifting. So what I did to get back into weightlifting, I got a membership at a place called Anytime Fitness. It's a 24 hour gym. I figured out where the locations were around me and I figured out their busy times because I didn't wanna be in a gym packed full of people in case a, a, like a symptom flare up did happen. I just didn't wanna deal with that. The other thing that I did was I hired a coach back on because previously I was a bodybuilder and a power lifter and so I had an objective eye. I had somebody who could write me a program because I'm very much a person who just wants to jump into things. I had somebody give me a program and coach me through this. I told them exactly what was going on. Somebody who could really hold me accountable and keep me to doing things slowly, right? So the most important part of this too was when I went into the gym, I took exercising very slow, right? I made sure that I got enough time in between sets to actually rest and um, recover. I never like hit a set, even if it was like three to five minutes, I never hit a set if I didn't feel like I was comfortable doing a set of that exercise yet. The other thing that I did was I took the tempos during exercises really slow. So for example, on a bench press, I would literally go one, two, three, four, five, really slow tempos, you get it. I really do feel like that helped ease me back into the gym. So in the beginning of this all, I took it very slow. And then I was able to gradually ramp things back up to where they used to be, to now to the point where I don't wait at all. I'm doing CrossFit, it's insane all the time. And I feel good, really, really good on most days. Most days it's a nine out of 10 every single time. So yeah, that's step number three. All right, we had to come back inside because it was getting too cold out. So the fourth thing that I think is important to mention here is diet and fluid intake and electrolyte intake. Um, diet, you know, previously I had done a lot of research on diet and mental health. Uh, we can get into that in a different video. But whenever you research things like that and like autoimmune issues, it always comes back to the same thing, getting rid of inflammatory foods. So one thing that I did do was I got rid of dairy and gluten again, and then I slowly brought them back in. And while I got rid of them, the symptoms did improve. I'd say like 40-ish percent, like not amazingly, but it did improve. And now slowly I brought the foods back in because I think that you should be able to eat everything under the sun as soon as, like after you heal yourself and bring everything back in slow, like I said. But the thing that I wanna touch on that I think is the most important is fluid and electrolyte, in electrolyte intake. Even before POT syndrome, I had done a lot of reading on this. There's a book called The Salt Fix, which I think everybody should read. And I think that everybody should just like eat, at least listen to it or listen to things about sodium and potassium, all that. What I did was I upped my water intake to at least a gallon per day and I have a minimum of a gallon and a half to 
two gallons of just fluid per day. And I also supplement with this thing called Liquid IV um, that I use two packets of every single day. It gives you a thousand milligrams of sodium with two packets and 500 milligrams of potassium with two packets. And not only subjectively do I feel better, you know, salting all my foods, using the Liquid IV, taking that much fluid in per day, objectively with the Whoop Strap, things are better. My recovery is always up. My heart rate variability, which I'll talk about in the next clip, is up. Everything is better. When you have pot syndrome in the morning, if you're not hydrated well, if you're not getting enough electrolytes, if you're not getting enough water, you have like a groggy, almost hungover feeling. And maybe even through the day, some people experience this. But <laughs> seriously, one of the most important things, making sure you're hydrated. I don't feel that anymore. The only time that I feel that is when I'm not hydrated properly and I can see the next, the last day that I wasn't hydrated properly or I didn't supplement with electrolytes. So I think that that's very important. Talk to your doctors about that and try it out maybe. All right, so let's cap this off behind the truck. We're about to put two liquid IVs in our gallon of water here. We're in the part, we're in the Target parking lot. So the fifth thing that I did, and to be honest, the thing that I think is the most important thing that I did was cardio, adding cardio back in. When you do research on like POT syndrome, when you like look into the information, something that does pop up, it doesn't pop up as much as other things, is um, heart rate variability training and how like there's ongoing research and studies talking about heart rate variability training and like how it affects POT syndrome, things of that nature. So that only makes sense to me because of the things that I do know about heart rate variability and performance and like athletes hold on I thought that it would only be a good thing if I started adding cardio in again and I was never big on cardio but I slowly developed a love for it because of this and again objectively because of my whoop strap my heart rate variability has gone up and my symptoms have declined they have gone lower so what I did to actually get back there get into cardio rather was I started with walks I started with long walks I started with 30 minute walks I worked my way up to an hour this took maybe a month and then I started running so I did like a mile and then I did two miles three miles things of that nature to the point where eventually I would prep for a marathon that I wasn't able to complete because of my knee my longest run was 15 or 16 miles somewhere around there in freezing cold weather and as I was doing cardio and as I was bumping it up, keeping my water intake consistent, you know, doing more electrolytes and things of that nature, I slowly started to see a decline in my symptoms and feel my symptoms get better. And now I'm at the point where I'm doing cardio and weights like in the same thing with CrossFit. And I, I have to say I'm not symptom free, but I feel literally at 90%. 90% is probably what I'm feeling right now. And it feels really good to say that. So again, take everything that I said today with a grain of salt. Consult your doctor before you do these things. But I do think that cardio was the most important piece to all of this. All right, guys. So I cardio was the biggest reason I feel like I did have a decline in symptomology and why I stopped getting so many flare-ups. But one thing that I really want to drive home to you guys is this. This is really the most important part for me is that I stopped playing the victim mentality and I stopped having woe is me feelings. And in life, you need to take responsibility and you need to take action where action is due. Whenever I sign on to these like, or I go on to these pot syndrome forums or like I go onto the websites or even when I was dealing with anxiety and depression, which was by the way, for the better half of my life. And whenever I'd go onto the websites for that or forums for that, it's always, I can't because of this, or I'm gonna wait because of this, or I wish I could, or da da da, you know, whatever start your fucking excuse sentence right it's always excuses nobody ever says I'm going to because of this I can because my family counts on me I will because of this it's always I can't I can't I can't how do I do this how do I do that none of that shit matters all that matters is taking action being your own health advocate it starts fucking today it doesn't start tomorrow it doesn't start when your doctor tells you it's okay it starts today you want to feel better you want to get better you need to take action stop waiting for the okay and stop making excuses if you're one of those people that and by the way i don't know if i said this but i feel like i am the right person to talk about this because i've gone through all this shit before right if you're one of those people that has like the really bad symptoms that you feel like you can't stand up for more than five minutes without getting tired you can't go to the cabinet to get a snack in the kitchen whatever what you need to do you need to find somebody that can follow you around that fucking kitchen you need to get up you need to go get that snack and you need to spend a little bit of time on your feet you need to start taking action it's not gonna kill you it's not gonna hurt you it's going to be uncomfortable but you need to push past 
that uncomfortable feeling. No matter what symptoms you're feeling, you need to get past that. Again, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, talk to your doctors. This is just the way that I choose to handle things. I really do believe taking action, not being a victim, and telling yourself, today might be a bad day, tomorrow might be better, but at least I'm going to take action. Not every day is gonna be amazing and motivated filled, but at least I will take a little bit of action. Even if that action is one step, two steps, three steps, maybe your cardio is getting yourself a wheelchair and pushing yourself down the block for a minute and then coming back, whatever it is, do something, take action. If I can do it, you can do it. I want you guys to remember this. We may bend, but we will not fucking break. I live my life by that. All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for this video. Please subscribe if you are new. Like the video if you did end up liking it. Remember, take everything that I said with a grain of salt. Consult your doctors before you do anything that I said. This is just my experience with POT syndrome. I hope that you guys did get something out of this. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Subscribe and like the damn thing. Peace out, bye.